So Elizabeth, man, I just really want your eloquent response on this. Elizabeth Warren, the Democratic candidate for the U.S. Senate in Massachusetts, Massachusetts recently created a media flap when she said, there is nobody in this country who got rich on his own. Nobody. You built a factory out there. Good for you. I want to be clear. I, <laughs> but I want to be clear. You moved your goods to Mark to market on the roads the rest of us paid for. You hired workers the rest of us paid to educate. You were safe in your factory because of the police forces and fire forces that the rest of us paid for. You didn't have to worry that marauding bands would come and seize everything at your factory and hire someone to protect against this because of the work the rest of us did. Now look, you build you built a factory and turned it into something terrific or great ideas. God bless. Keep a big hunk of it. But the underlying social contract is you take a hunk of that and pay forward for the next kid who comes along. And that is the end of the quote. I would like your response. Yeah, I've uh, I've heard that. And uh, boy, <laughs> talk about a a smarmy mom thing uh, that is full of about as many lies as you can stuff into syllables. Uh, it's like putting a cherry bomb in a falafel. So um, I think that's, uh, that's very interesting. First of all, let's, let's start this. Okay, so there's nobody in this country who got rich on his own. Nobody. You built a factory out there, good for you. Well, the well, fucking problem with American economics, as I just talked about in the intro, is that there aren't factories being built. <laughs> right? That's, the factories are closing down to the rate of 15 every single day. Completely. So, so that's all nonsense to begin with. And now, nobody on, in this country got rich on his own. Yeah, that's true. And I did not invent the English language. Does that mean I need to pay everyone who speaks English or everyone who came before? No. Of course not. I didn't invent the whole language on my own. I'd like to change parts of it, for sure. But uh, got rich on his own. Yeah, of course. There's trade involved in getting rich. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, but I want to be clear. You moved your goods to market on the roads the rest of us paid for. Well, um, first of all, that's not true because there's large, <laughs> a significant percentage of Americans uh, and people in most of the world don't pay taxes for roads. They, they, they're net consumers of government benefits. Otherwise, there wouldn't be such a thing as a national debt. So that's not, uh, that's not true. Most people don't pay for the roads. And the second thing is, of course, if people did pay for roads, then why is there a debt? Why is there a national debt? Why is there a deficit? If everyone pays for everything, no. And the other thing, too, is that it's hard to say. I mean, it's, it's an equivocation of the word paid. Uh, when you're forced to pay for something, are you really paying for it? Are you really paying for it? I mean, I guess you could say in a way, if a guy's sticking a knife at my ribs and I pay him to, to, to take my wallet and go away, that I'm paying to not get stabbed. But I don't think we would really put that in the same category as paying to go and see a movie, which is sort of a voluntary thing. Uh, and said, so, so you hired workers, the rest of us paid to educate. Oh, sweet mother of God. Sweet mother of God. Is she really going to be defending American education? Where in many places, less than 50% of Americans graduate from high school, and those that do have to go to remedial education to fill out a goddamn job application? So you were safe in, in your factory because the, of police forces and fire forces the rest of us paid for. Safe in your factory. Is that right? Safe in your factory. Uh, that doesn't mean, that, so that means that there's not a huge amount of ugly rules and regulations and, and sh overhead and, and property taxes and all of that. You're, you're safe in your factory because nobody's going to come and, 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 and steal things from. Oh, wait, no, except for the government, of course, who's going to come and, and rip you off for 35% corporate taxes and uh, millions and millions of dollars in property taxes and all other kinds of taxes. Uh, so no, you're not safe in your factory while the government is around because if you don't obey their rules, they're going to kidnap you and throw you in a cage. You don't have to worry that the marauding bands would come and seize everything at your factory. That's true. It's not bands unless you count the multiple layers of government as different bands. It is one band called the government. <sighs> so let's see. Now look. You built a factory and it turned into something terrific or a great idea. God bless. Keep a big hunk of it. Well, isn't that nice? She's allowing you to keep a big hunk of that which you've earned through voluntary trade. Isn't that nice? 
But part of the underlying social contract is you take a hunk of that and pay it forward to the next kid who comes along. Oh, my goodness. Is she literally in the government talking about the government's concern for children? I mean, is she? I mean, you have to be so full of shit your eyes are brown to be able to stand and say that with a straight face. That you really care. So, you see, the government is not badly educating the children and forcing their parents to pay for this indoctrination. The government is not setting up a system that has destroyed the two-parent household, thus causing untold economic and psychological devastation to children. The government is not paying for a psychiatrist to drug children who are not satisfied with being locked in indoctrination cages and made to stare at a slowly squeaking chalkboard six hours a day. No, no. Nothing to do with that. And of course, the government cares so much about children that it would never laden them with debt. Would never la ladle them, uh, belabor them with debt, bury them under debt. No, see, the government cares so much about children. And let's, you know, just, just to sort of put the nail in the coffin of this rebuttal, let's just pretend she's talking about, about children. Let's pretend she's talking about babies. Let's rephrase this. There's nobody in this country who had a baby on his own. <laughs> nobody. You banged some broad and you made a baby. Good for you. But I want to be clear. You banged that broad on a bed that somebody else made. That somebody else made. You went to a hospital where people were trained by other people. And other people built that. You didn't build that whole hospital yourself, did you? Other people built that hospital. And you were safe in that hospital because there were security guards. And so you made a baby. And the baby is healthy and happy. Good for you. Good for you. I think that you should be able to spend a decent amount of time with that baby. But the underlying social contract is the people who made that bed you banked the broad on, well, they own a good chunk of that baby. And they are going to go and take that baby's kidney should they ever get sick. And they are going to get that baby to work in their fields without pay should they ever need that. And they will. And the people who built the hospital, even though you paid them, well, they built the hospital so they own part of that baby. See, this is a social contract. They own part of that baby and that child and that adult uh, as, as you go along. The people who put the wires up to bring the electricity to make the little machines that go bing in the hospital, they also own part of your baby. So don't imagine that that baby is yours just because you had voluntary lovemaking with a willing partner or a turkey baster and you paid voluntarily for the services to deliver that baby and you're educating that child yourself. No, no, no. The child is owned by us. But don't worry. We will let you have visitation rights with your children and your money should we see fit.